Just ten hours remain of the DPI era, as the fastest sports cars to headline in North America bow out of competition at the end of Motul Petit Le Mans. I'm Ewan, and this is your preview for the 25th running of the annual IMSA season finale. We'll start off with DPI, which has a seven car field for its final race, and all eyes will be on the pair of Acura ARX 05s which will be fighting for the championship. Following a win last time out at Road America, Wayne Taylor racing a 19 points clear of Maya Shank racing, with the rest all out of contention, assuming at least one of the Acura starts the race. Felipe Albuquerque and Ricky Taylor have already taken four wins this season, and for the finale will be joined by current FIWEC Championship leader, Brendan Hartley. Maya Shank, on the other hand, have taken a much more consistent approach to the season. They might be winless since Daytona, but a run of five consecutive runner-up spots has kept them in the championship fight. Tom Plonkfist and Oliver Jarvis will be joined this weekend by Helio Castroneves. The Acuras are also on top on the Michelin Endurance Cup, although this is a significantly closer with every car still in contention for the title. After a difficult start to the season, the current form car in DPI is the 0-1 Cadillac of Chip Ganassi Racing, which is on a four-race podium streak thanks to Sebastian Bourdais and Renga van der Zander, who will be joined by Scott Dixon this weekend. The big focus for Cadillac will be on the manufacturer's title, where they currently sit just 33 points behind Acura. LMP2 features a six-car grid this weekend, with a four-way fight on the cards for the title, an all-important automatic invitation to the 2022-24 hours of Le Mans. Defending Petit Le Mans winner John Ferrano of Tower Motorsports currently holds a 33-point lead over Era Motorsport, with the number 11 PR1 Matheson entry and Dragon Speed USA also still contenders. In the Michelin Endurance Cup, it's the number 52 PR1 Matheson car of Ben Keating, Scott Huffaker and Mikkel Jensen which only needs to finish the race to take the title. With two wins in three starts, the part season effort is certainly going to be the ones to watch. LMP3 has a huge 11 car grid this weekend, with three cars still capable of taking the crown. Core Autosports have only been off the podium once all season, and the team were in prime position to take their first championship since 2015. Defending champion Gar Robinson sits 83 points off, making it back-to-back -back crowns for Riley Motorsports, whilst Junior 3 Racing's Ari Below and Garrett Grist are also still in contention. One car worth keeping an eye on is the Sean Creech Motorsport Ligier, with Lance Wilsey again absent. The Endurance Cup runners-up currently have the crew of Joel Barbosa, Malte Jakobsen and Nico Pina. The first should need no introduction, and the latter two are among the best young stars in LMP3 at the moment. Sean Creech sits just three points behind Riley Motorsports in the MEC, as Riley looked to defend their crown. The GTD Pro title was effectively wrapped up as far back as Road America, with last year's Petit Le Mans GTLM winners Matt Campbell and Matthew Yamane, who will be joined this weekend by Felipe Nasser, only needing to start to secure the crown for FAF Motorsports, after a season already made up of five wins and two further podiums. Their big fight points-wise will be for the Endurance Cup, where they sit third, three points behind Corvette Racing and their number three car, and one behind Risa Competizoni, with all seven cars still in contention for the MEC title this weekend. The winning team in both GT classes at the race last year were present in GTD Pro, with WeatherTech Racing moving back up to the pro ranks for the finale, with Cooper McNeil absent from their number 79 Mercedes, whilst Ross Gunn and Heart of Racing team made the step up on a full season basis this year. The debut of the BMW M4 GT3 has been a disappointing one in GTD Pro, with a best finish of third, and this is the last shot Conor DiFilippi, John Edwards and Jesse Crone have of giving Team RLL one last GT win, before they move up to the GTP ranks next year. And last but definitely not least, six different cars head to Petit Le Mans with a realistic shot of the GTD title. Heart of Racing Team, Team Court Off Motorsports, 
Wright Motorsport, Windward Racing, Turner Motorsport and Peregrine Racing. The GTD field is up to 16 for this weekend, as plenty of part-time entries rejoin the grid, including the re-addition of the Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo and the McLaren 720S GT3, the former of which is making its final limps to start before the introduction of the Ferrari 296 GT3 next January. These part-time entries lead the Michelin Endurance Cup, with 15 points still to be awarded, as Inception Racing sit 5 clear of AF Corsa at the top of the table. Also going right to the wire is the manufacturer standings, with just 23 points splitting BMW and Mercedes, and Aston Martin, who won here last year, also still in contention. Not quite as close is the fight for the Le Mans invitation for best bronze driver in GTD, as the only full season bronze, Ryan Hardwick has that one in the bag. The big factor to keep an eye on this weekend is going to be the weather, with Hurricane Ian currently forecast to hit Road Atlanta on race day. If the race goes ahead, this should lead to some challenging conditions to say the least, although due to better tyre tech, the prototype should still be able to beat the GTs this time, unlike in 2015. Contingency plans are already in place, and with no track action planned for Sunday, the race may be moved back a day, or with IMSA having booked the circuit for GTP testing through until Wednesday, we may even have a midweek Petit Le Mans, if proven necessary. The other main factor is going to be traffic, with 47 cars on the circuit, and only 7 in the top class. The DPIs are going to find themselves regularly stumbling across clumps of slower cars. Although the field size is only 3 more than last year, the removal of GTLM means you now have a slowest class of 23 instead of 15, which can make a big difference. And although the focus will be on the on-track action, don't be surprised if we hear plenty of off-track news, with teams announcing their plans for 2023 and beyond. Who do you think is going to win Petit Le Mans this year? Please let me know in the comments below, and whilst you're down there, why not press that like button? It really helps me out.